Today I'm going to show you how I shot and edited this photo in Adobe Photoshop. Hey, what's going on YouTube? My name is Mo and I'm a car photographer from Bahrain. If it's your first time around this channel and you'd like to learn all about car photography and Photoshop, then go ahead and subscribe now so you don't miss out on all the cool stuff that I create every week. All right, this is kind of different. I'm going to actually take this camera with me and I'm going to show you how I'm going to light paint the interior of the Q7. Now, um, I'm going to use the Ice Light uh, 2 for light painting. I prefer this because it's uh, very soft, but again, it's very expensive. And there are many other alternatives like light sticks and um, you know things that you can just get from Home Depot, just like Jimmy Zhang. And his images are just crazy gorgeous. Now, the other thing that I'm going to use is the Sony a7R2. I borrowed this from my friend Ali Rafai, who is Bahrain finance photographer. I'm going to leave a link to his Instagram profile in the description below. And the new 24 to 105 G lens from Sony. So no more Metabones um, adapters and Canon lenses that loses connection every now and then. All right, so let's go. And here we are. All right, so I have the Q7. Tried to find a very dark location. This is the darkest thing I could find in this area. Now I'm going to turn off the main fluorescent light in the, in the garage. And um, a few things to note that I'm going to use the app on my phone to control the camera, which actually, let me show you how it's set up. All right, here's the setup. And here's how I framed the shot so far. I've set the focus, I'm on F13. The shutter speed is at five seconds for the long exposure. And I turned the window down, so any reflection within, you know, light painting will be removed. Um, and uh, we can always comp in the background or the backdrop later on in Photoshop. And that's why I brought it down. That's it for now. I'm going to turn off all the lights I could possibly turn off. And I'm going to use the app to control this camera. And I'll be sitting just right here. Light painting. All right, just one more thing before I uh, close the lights. I'm going to take multiple exposures and I'm going to start with the um, front of the car. So from the outside, I'm going to light paint on the dashboard from the outside. And I'm going to do the same from the inside in part. So I might end up with, I don't know, uh, let's say six, seven different images. Um, and then I'm going to combine these in Adobe Photoshop. So now that we are in Lightroom, now I've imported all the photos into a folder, into Lightroom. And what I did basically is I went through the photos and um, selected and rated the ones that I'm going to perhaps that I'm going to use in Photoshop. Not necessarily use them all, but the ones that I think that would qualify to import into Photoshop and then mask off the um, details that I want to Oh, sorry, mask in the details that I want to keep and mask off the ones that I just don't want to keep. All right, so let me turn the filters on. All right, what you're looking at right now is the exposure in which I light painted the car from the outside. And this exposure basically will take care of the dashboard. It will light up the dashboard over here, some elements of the car from the inside. That will be very impossible to light paint from the inside. Additionally, this highlight that is on top of the steering wheel is also uh, basically created by that exposure. So these are the the ones and the passes that I took and I've used one of them 
to complete that image. And as you can see, I forgot to close the door in this one and I closed it afterwards. So always make sure, you know, when, when you light paint, make sure you have those detail sets. For example, the navigation part uh, is very important. I had nothing on the screen, so I just had to turn on the navigation just for this to appear. And the other thing that you need to basically take note of is this right here. So what you're looking at, you know, I had the doors open, uh, one for the uh, camera, one because I was sitting in the back, and then these notifications and, you know, all of these things or elements that you want to maybe um, think of how you can uh, Photoshop out or in later on. For example, I took this exposure. I know it's quite different. I had to close the door, so I had to move the camera and stuff like that. But I took this exposure to basically, um, you know, I'll be able later on to comp in, for example, this. And I only did this part because I got lazy and did not complete this part. All right, so moving onwards. Um, this is uh, kind of the base exposure. And, and I basically had the... Um, the light stick right somewhere right here and it was just uh, lighting up the car kind of a base exposure that I can have at the bottom and, and then stack layers the other layers on top of it all right so the next image is basically an exposure for the door and if you notice I'm here holding my um, phone which I'm looking at what I'm going to shoot so um, this detail was very important. I didn't have to, you know, move the light stick across and rather just have it hang in there and then take that exposure. And it's mainly just to basically light up this area down here. And similarly, I did the same thing with the steering wheel. I just had the light hanging in there and um, snapped the shot. So this could perhaps qualify for the steering wheel and um, the panel on the left right here. Maybe a little bit of the seating, but I believe I have taken another exposure for the seats. And then, of course, I took different variation, which I actually moved the um, light stick or the ice, um, the ice light across to um, light paint, not just the steering wheel, but also the seats. Um, a bit of the dashboard elements right here and the panel down there and I took perhaps I, I took perhaps three different runs and here's another one that I took basically to um, to illuminate the seats and the panel uh, down here and I did I think another pass you know, which was brighter for the seats just right here right here and so on forth this one was in particular for this area down uh, this side. And I also like how the light came down on the seat, but I'm, I'm not sure if I've used that. I, mean, I perhaps have used this exposure just for this area down there for the panel and the, you know, the armrest part. Now in this image, um, I did not move the light stick. I actually have uh, rotated a bit towards the uh, driver's seat and then I snapped that exposure. And um, I just wanted to get, you know, these details like this fine line over here and, uh, and, and how the, um, this, the armrest kind of thing just lit up. And I believe I've used this exposure for this seat. But it came in a bit hot. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have just used that but again that's something that can, i can always go back and change yeah, in photoshop all right for this exposure uh this one in particular i just had the sunroof open and i just wanted to you know get like another kind of a shot just in case i needed to use it for the seats and um as a as a base exposure however i think i ended up using this exposure for the seat over here and here's another variant of, you know, just before ending the shoot, I say, you know what, let me just go outside, take another shot just to make sure I got it all right. And if you notice, I did not actually swerve the light stick towards the end. I just wanted to illuminate this part of the car.
and of course the last exposure which is the one that we um i spoke about for the uh, dashboard or the panels or the virtual cockpit yep so let's go into photoshop and show you how it was done so now once you are in photoshop it becomes a matter of you know very very simple matter actually it's just a matter of masking things in and out of course i had most of the layers set into linen but also that doesn't mean that i uh, for a certain layer i want that light to hit the door for example i just don't want it to ruin the shot because you know it's all about you know lights and shadows and sometimes when you put all the layers into a light and you have a very bright image that you basically can't use so these are the eight layers that i basically have selected which led into the final image now uh, i'm just going to walk you through the layers and the masks that i've created yeah let's get rolling so like i said i used this exposure as the base shot and i had a mask on top of it and i just wanted to mask out um the uh the navigation part because you know this base exposure kind of moved a little bit and uh, just couldn't like fit everything into place if i would fit this here then it will won't work the same thing for the navigation so i just removed it out completely all right moving forward with the external shot see how things now kind of coming together you see how it lights up the dashboard and a bit of the steering wheel and now if I enable that mask, um, you'd see that I just removed, basically masked out the light, masked out some of the elements of the car itself. All right, I call that, uh, I call this layer the fine line layer because I just wanted to add the line, but I think I ended up like adding all of these exposures. And so if I just remove the mask, there you go. So it basically that line over here and the, um, exposure on the seat itself now the next exposure is for the seats as you can see um, and if I just remove the mask you see I just basically uh, I basically removed the light and I removed the reflection in the mirror down here and you see how things are um, you know, coming together right now it also kind of uh, let up the, um, the steering wheel because I knew that there was one layer that will dominate the lighting on the steering wheel. All right, moving onwards with this kind of dashboard and overall exposure for the dashboard and this panel down here. If I remove the mask, you see that I've masked out some of the elements, especially the wheel, the steering wheel, and I removed the light from it. Now this exposure is basically for the steering wheel. Um, if I remove the mask, you you notice that I basically removed the light and some of the, um, you know, when you, when, you, when you do light painting, it leaks a lot to different places. So you need to make sure that you remove those leaks and they don't interfere with the other layers. These kind of lights don't add up together. Like some of the lights coming from the left and suddenly it's going, you know, the shadow is gone and then you have a light from the right and that looks flat. And that's something that you want to avoid. All right, so moving onwards, this is the one with the passenger light. And if I apply the mask, um, you can see that it just affected about that area. And I think a bit of uh, the dashboard over here. Yep, it did light up the dashboard because it was pretty dark down here. Now this layer I just wanted to discard because uh, it's another uh, external exposure. However, I noticed these highlights down here that I wanted really to keep, and that was basically it. So the entire mask was just about, you know, adding that fine highlight. I wish though, I wish though I did a bit of light painting to this part of the image because it's kind of pretty dark. So uh, that's a note to self. This is the first time I'm doing it. And for the next time, I need to ensure that I don't mess out these details right here as well. All right, the next layer was basically is the one that we spoke about earlier. And if you would notice down here, if I disable this, it's the, you know, it's the door not notification um, that I've replaced with the just like the parked ones. 
And these are layers just to dim out the windows. I just basically use the pen tool, traced around these areas, and uh, I've painted them with black. And then if you've been following me with you know all the other videos that I've done, I just use Camera Raw to add a bit of you know um, contrast, and I increased just a tad on the whites. I then added a curve to add more contrast and a curve to dim down this area because I think it's just too bright that it draws you know um, the eye's attention to it. I could also go back to the original layer and then just you know dial down. Uh, the opacity of that layer or that part in particular and then just you know move onwards all right that's it in Photoshop uh, if we go back to Lightroom this is another variation um, of the image you'd notice that I've uh, basically faded it out the way you could actually create fades in your image is basically using the tone curve so I created one two three Four, three points and then I moved the last point at the bottom if you move it up it fades up the image even more gives it that gives it that vintage look and um, I believe I added a bit of yellows to the highlights so if I uh, turn this one off it's very minimal you wouldn't maybe notice it but I just added a bit of uh, yellows in the highlights and then of course sharpening with a mask of 68 percent all right and um that was it um it's a matter of planning things out before you go into shoot you say you know i want to light up this area this way i want to light up that area that way sometimes you have to improvise at the shoot it's also very handy that i have the app so i can see the exposures i can review um, the images without touching the camera so you don't move it back and forth uh, set the proper um, uh, exposure, set the proper uh, shutter speed, set the proper focus, make sure everything in focus before you start. You wouldn't want to light paint something, go back home, you import the uh, images and then you know it, some of the shots is just like out of focus because that will <laughs> basically drain you in. So always try to think of these elements. Also, when you are on set, take as much of images as you can. Don't do that mistake that, you know, you took three images and you're happy with it. Um, now, if in my case, I could have taken more images. Um, I could have taken more shots and that would perhaps help me uh, light up this area. But, you know, sometimes you have to learn it the hard way. And that's pretty much it, YouTube. Now, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. By the way, I was blessed with a newborn baby girl, and I called her Yasmin. In Arabic and in English, that's Jasmine. All right, don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram. And I'll see you at the next video.